Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Round 8 from the 41st Chess Olympiad 2014 had Hungary paired up with the USA. Playing at board 3 for Hungary was 18-year-old Richard Rapper. He's the youngest ever Hungarian Grandmaster, having achieved that title just shy of his 14th birthday. And he was paired with the U.S.'s number 3, Alexander Anishuk, a 2006 U.S. champion. Let's have a look at it. Richard opens with b3, which is not an all-too-common start at top-level play, top-level classical play, I should say. But um, his style is just all over. It's, he's a very unorthodox player, and usually with his games we'll see uh, very original positions very early on in each game. So this is the start of the nimzovich larsen attack. And we get to see the modern variation of this opening. So black replies with e5. And this is the main point of this opening right here, this square e5. White will be applying pressure to it. And black for these next, let's say, seven moves, pretty much all of those moves are going to be lending support or doing something, whether it be directly or indirectly, about the e5 square. So, okay, bishop b2, knight c6 to defend, e3, getting ready to undermine the e5 square, knight f6, bishop b5, bishop d6, which is quite awkward to see this, not so common um, in other openings to be obstructing a central pawn because it will usually mean that the bishop will have difficulty getting out, but... Black is anticipating an eventual capture of the knight on c6, and the d-pawn will be there to recapture, which will simply open the door for the light square bishop. So, okay, knight a3, only temporarily on the edge. The ideal square will be to get to c4 to do what? More pressure on e5. a6, the knight is taken out, the bishop is now free, and now knight c4. Two pieces are on it, black needs another defender, queen e7. And now, okay, a4, the start of what exactly? Well, a4 is aimed at securing the knight on the knight position on c4, though it still could be kicked. We could still have this b5 move. The a4 move is pretty much saying, you could kick my knight, but it will come at the cost of activating now my rook on a1. Okay, black castles, a5. So now the knight is going nowhere b4 is not going to be now possible. And the additional idea behind this is to now have this rook lift possibility, rook to a4, raking the whole fourth rank. Bishop g4, black is now fully developed as a lead in development, knight e2, knight d7. And what is the intention behind this move? Well, one idea is to now free up the f-pawn. There might be the idea of making sure this bishop doesn't get out of control, or in other words, playing f6 to reinforce this point. And there can also be the idea of playing e4 and then the knight jumping into that central post e5, or even later on, an idea of, let's say, moving a rook. I'm not sure if it's uh, the f rook to this square or maybe d8 but an idea to move this rook out of the way and then have some knight reposition to the e6 square. Okay, but we're, we're not there just yet, but just a couple ideas that are maybe available on the black side. White castles, and now black goes with move 11, e4. Okay, so this, this diagonal is opened right up. And black with that last move is grabbing some space, vacating the e5 square. This, by the way, is the only black central pawn, and it's now in white's position. And white addresses this idea soon enough. First removing the dark square bishop, and now playing f3. So this pawn will be eliminated. With this capture, okay, black now has a new central pawn, but... The one that's most annoying is the one on e4. White is now doing something about it with f3. e takes f, g takes f, and now bishop h3. So with that, 
last the with those last couple of moves, the structure has changed. How so? We have a half open G file. And there's already a bishop here pointing at G7. So this is something black will certainly have to keep a close eye on. One way to address the pressure is again playing this F3 move to blunt that diagonal. But first and foremost, the rook on F1 is hit. Rook F2, knight E5, and now F4. This is maybe already a slight misstep on the black side, playing knight to E5 as it does run into f4 push with tempo. And, well, this pawn, who's to say that it can't continue to push to f5? And, well, we do actually get to see that in the game. So knight e5. What's maybe better is to have the queen over here on h4, plant the knight on e5, and then play f6. Or this regrouping, in other words, to get the queen out in this direction, and then you could play this f6 move. Okay, we don't have that. Instead it is, after rook f2, knight e5 immediately. The knight is kicked, and the first move to really think about is, well, knight g4, but unfortunately it's simply not working, because this bishop is now in, big, in some big trouble. After rook f3, well, where would the bishop go? So while, while f4, well, after f4, while knight g4 looks quite appealing, throwing a punch at the rook, rook f3, Big trouble for the bishop. You could defend it, but eventually, if the queens are traded, again, same story, the bishop's going to be dead. And if, let's say, after queen e1, the queen backs up, well, queen g3, again, bishop's done. So, it's not knight g4, in other words, but rather knight g6, which is running into f5 with tempo. White now placing a pawn in black's position, and the knight has to go elsewhere. Queen gives a check first, knight blocks, and now knight to e5. We're at move 18 here. Let's just take a moment to look at what's happened so far. Um, the main things that I see here on the white side is every one of the white pieces are playing. Well, not this rook just yet. Let me go make one more move. Rook a4. Every white piece is really working here. And you might also consider this pawn as an attacking piece. It's not long off from some pressure against the king, some combination of f6, some rook lifts, maybe rook to f4. This knight is not stable. He could be taken out at any moment. If the queen isn't around to watch over h4, maybe the rook is there to take out the bishop or put pressure on the bishop at least. Knight h5 ideas come to mind. My main point here is that every white piece is working, while these are the only three on the black side, these rooks have yet to contribute, and this is a big problem. I mean, when we look at it, when we compare king positions, we can say that black has a better pawn structure, a better shelter pawn-wise for their king, but when we look at piece activity, white definitely is the better side when it comes to that, and it's it's already quite a difficult position for black, I would say, to try to find accurate defense against the great possibilities that are present on the white side, with all of these pieces being very active. Okay, so the game follows with bishop g4, queen is hit, queen f1, and now f6, a move that I was referring to earlier, to simply uh, blunt the diagonal of the bishop. Uh, if you'd like to, pause the video at this moment right here. After f6, see what move or what variation you would run with or what plan you might want to implement from this position in reply to f6. Okay. Uh, the move played in the game was bishop takes e5, and after that move, black resigned. f6 is uh, turns out to be a big lemon. Um, the reason being, bishop takes knight, and it doesn't matter how you recapture. Queen c4 comes with check. You can move the king or block, but the main thing here, your bishop's dead. This was simply a, a big blind spot, apparently, for black after this 
20th move, f6, that opened up this diagonal. The knight is taken out, so now queen c4 is available. And again, black simply resigned at this point. They're going to lose a piece. This was a big mistake. The game's over. Um, now, we could say that this right here is, you know, the biggest mistake of the game, but I think, I think the improvement is actually 10 moves back or maybe a better, a better reorganization of this queen, knight, and bishop if we are in fact going to work with this particular pawn structure. If we're to go back to just move, move 11 right here, or move 10, I should say, move 11, I'm sorry, e4, I think this is a, a point where both players would maybe even go back and look at this e4 move. Is it really the right approach to be playing e4? Notice that when it was played, we ended up having this structural change, and I think it's one that is quite good for white. Uh, the game, of course, shouldn't end so abruptly with that f6 move and then the tactic, but I think this is... It's a weakened king position, but I don't like this idea. I wouldn't like the idea of trying to defend the pressure on g7 with major pre major piece pressure and the bishop pressure on g7. Um, if this is a variation uh, that black still wants to go into, if this is a structure black would still want to play, again, I believe a better continuation would be queen h4, and then to centralize the knight, the bishop can be taken, but ensuing moves of let's say f6 to blunt the diagonal maybe this is a, a better approach from this pawn structure if however it's a pawn structure that black black deems as well i wouldn't want to go into that anymore or i wouldn't want to try that again i wonder if instead of e4 at this moment that f6 I wonder if f6 would be another try and there's multiple structural changes that uh, can ensue from here, one of which is f3, then kicking the bishop and playing e4, and in reply maybe there is this idea of playing rook to e8 and just making a fairly normal move here to reinforce the e4 square, getting the other rook here, and trying this type of reorganization for the knight. This might be another uh, way to pr proceed on the black side, basically trying to reinforce the e5 square still, instead of pushing the pawn at this moment here, instead of playing e4, to simply say I want to still keep focus on the e5 square and go with something like rook to e8, knight f8, knight e6 ideas, get the other rook over. Uh, one other Pawn structure change could be after f3, bishop here, knight g3, bishop to g6. We could also have f4, and I believe black is still in a position to simply bolster the e5 square. If it's ever taken, black is doing quite all right with this uh, variation here. Again, focusing on keeping control over that e5 square. But we never quite got to that clearly in this game. Instead, it was this particular structure, e going with e4. White takes out that bishop. A little bit wrecked of a, a pawn structure, but still, all of the white pieces are now going to be working after this rook lift, that earlier a4, a5 idea, the rook now coming over, and sure enough, well, that tactic was available after this uh, poor choice, of course, with f6, but it clearly does happen. Uh, bishop takes knight, and again, it was at this point that Black resigned. So um, that's all for this video. As always, I hope you got something out of it. Take care. Bye. This move is there to secure c5. And so far I've only talked about two pawn breaks for Black. But maybe with the insertion of b4, this is a new pawn break on the white side, c5.